When you first meet someone, dating or otherwise, it's natural that you start learning about each other. People with high levels of narcissism aren't just learning about you, they're sizing you up. Narcissists move fast. They need to know what kind of supply you'll provide in a relationship, if any, and how to best pursue that. This video will explain some of this process and give you some insight into how there's a test that you have to pass that you didn't even know you were taking. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess. If this is your first time here and you want more information on narcissistic behaviors in a positive, supportive environment, then start now by hitting the subscribe button. You're tested from the get-go, and it doesn't matter if this is done online or in person. What's so scary about testing is it looks very much like simple getting to know you, of course, to the untrained eye. <laughs> Narcs are looking for very specific tells, quote unquote, that indicate whether or not you will be a good source of supply for them to add to their narc harem. But what makes a good source? Well, let's talk about that. Here we go. Number one, narcissists are seeking out the vulnerable. Maybe you're a broken person, quote unquote. Maybe you just went through a breakup, a really bad divorce, your self-esteem is low. Maybe you're just not where you want to be in life right now. You're unhappy. Maybe you have a history of being in abusive relationships. Maybe you are a very naive person. Do you have mommy issues, daddy issues? Do you open up and share a lot, a lot of information that maybe you shouldn't right away? They want to know what your past is all about. What were your exes like? How did those relationships end? They're going to ask you all different kinds of questions that pertain to all those things I just listed. Narcs want to know things like this. They're gauging vulnerability and sensitivity. They flock to people that are going through a low point in their lives, those who need someone to talk to or some kind of support. If you have a history of abusive partners, it can point to you likely choosing another person who's toxic. Narcs look for perfectionist traits, people-pleasing traits, and so on. They're looking for those who are willing to open up, be vulnerable, very kind, forgiving, open, honest, wearing the heart on the sleeve. Those are the people they chase. Those are the people where they try to get into your life, learn every aspect about it as you go through the test. Tell me down in the comments if you shared a lot of information really quickly with this person. Were they asking you a lot of questions? Did it feel like an interview? Tell me what that process was like down in the comments. Number two, narcissists are seeking out the dependable. And I've said this for years. If you've been around my channel for a while, you know it. My old nickname, I literally called myself old reliable in my own relationship with an abusive narcissist. I was the one who was called upon for any and all issues. When you're being tested, they pay attention to things. Are you a fixer, a solver? Again, the people pleaser, the perfectionist, the helper, the rescuer. Will you give them money, pick them up in the middle of the night, you know, in the pouring rain, give them a place to stay? How far will you go? How dependable are you and how reliable are you? That is huge when they're seeking out supply. Narcs have to seek out many sources as well. Not everybody typically is good at providing all the things that they need because, I mean, let's face it, they need like a lot. <laughs> People with these traits are usually also highly empathic as well. The fixers, the savers, so on and so forth. Perfectionists, which I've mentioned a couple of times now, are also a prime target. Perfectionists don't just want to help or fix or save. They do it to the absolute max. When I would hear this person tell me they were short on rent, for example, I didn't just give them what they needed to cover rent. Of course, I gave more than that. Assuming they needed more than that, they didn't even have their rent money. I didn't just grab them a few things from the grocery store. No, I did a full-blown grocery haul for them and so on. This tapped into my need for validation, to be good, to be praised. And the narc knew that this was the way I operated. This was the way that they behaved. They asked for a little and I would over deliver every single time. And how could this not be a great thing for highly narcissistic people? Not only because of everything that they get, they didn't even ask for it. 
And if we become angry or we feel a little put out because we're doing so much and not getting anything back, they can look at you, survivor, and grin and say, what? I didn't ask you to do this. You wanted to do this. Number three, narcissists are looking for the blame takers. Not interested in taking any (laughs) accountability or blame for anything. A narcissist needs to know that you're going to take that responsibility, not only for what you do wrong, but you also need to take the heat for all of their bullshit too. In the beginning, they will look for how you respond to guilt. Can you be guilt tripped? Can they make you feel bad? Like you need to fix things. It's all your fault. So you're the one who needs to jump on this and make it okay. Can they get you to believe that you somehow caused this? Can they gaslight you? Are you susceptible to that? When I discovered infidelity in my relationship and I confronted this person, I was told that, I mean, come on, it's your fault. It's your fault I'm cheating on you. I was told that I wasn't spending enough time with this person. I wasn't making an effort. And astonishingly, I believed them. I took them at their word and I actually felt guilty. I really felt bad. Despite the fact this person never told me they were unhappy until they were caught doing what they were doing, that has nothing to do with it. I took the hit, took the blame, and then, of course, responded. Good old reliable here. (laughs) Tried to fix it by spending more time, trying to do more, give more. So this person learned, hey, I can tell her, regardless of all the shit I do, I can tell her it's her fault that I'm doing this, and she will totally believe me. If you'd like to share your story with me, ask me questions about narcissism, or get help and support for what you're going through right now from a fellow survivor, you can set up one-on-one phone sessions with me by sending an email to bookachatwithjess at gmail.com, or you can go to my website. The link and all that is down in the description for you, and you can book chat sessions from there. Also on my website, you'll find a list of chat topics and services that I offer when we have one-on-one chat sessions. And now, on with the video. Number four, some narcissists are seeking out smart people. Think about it. Narcs need to take advantage of you, right? But they need you to be desirable, dependable, reliable, all that stuff I pretty much just talked about. So I need to be very, very clear when I talk about intelligence and smart people. Intelligence is one thing, and being naive is quite another. I would like to think (laughs) I'm somewhat intelligent, but I didn't have a PhD in this kind of bullshit. I was very naive to how all of this worked, and thus I passed the test. I had to be somewhat smart, though. The narc was looking for somebody very independent. Most of them are. They want you to make your own way, make your own money, because of course they want your money. They want you to have all this stuff because you have to give it to them. They're normally not looking for stupid people. I repeat, they are not looking for dummies. They're looking for the broken, the naive, the hopeless, the empathic, the codependent. None of those things equals stupid. Not a single one of them. Number five. Narcissists are seeking those with low self-esteem. And this ties into my earlier points. I don't want to linger here too long, but I did kind of want to give it its own talking point. I still think it's important. Low self-esteem is music to a narc's ears. When we're just not maybe feeling on top of our game, we don't have our A game, so on and so forth. We lost a job. Maybe we had a death in our family. We're going through some kind of a hard time, you know, fresh out of a breakup, something like that. We're far more susceptible in those moments to the shit a narcissist will throw at us. We don't have our guard up. Our boundaries might not be where they need to be. We might be lonely or upset just going through something. Standards, boundaries, consequences, what are those? We're not thinking about that right now. We're grieving or we're angry or we're just really busy. Something's happening and they catch you when you're at a low point. And then a narc, of course, swoops in with some love bombing when we feel low And in a lot of cases, it can be a perfect storm. And I know this because it's what happened to me. When I met this person, I had just a few weeks prior confessed how I felt about, you know, a certain person and (laughs) they did not (laughs) reciprocate (laughs) the way I felt. So naturally it hit my self-esteem, felt pretty shitty about myself, but whoosh, 
Here came this person a couple of weeks later to tell me everything that I'd been wanting to hear from somebody else. And they tapped into that so fast because I was open and honest about where I was in my life and I ended up paying for it. What I needed to feel better about myself was very quickly learned and then presented to me all as part of my little love bomby package that I got for three months. Similarly, narcissists are looking for those who doubt themselves. They don't feel worthy of things. If you feel low, like you don't deserve anything, this is learned. And of course, as I'm sure you know, you don't get a damn thing. They are fabulous at learning how little you'll actually take in order for them to stay with you. It's an uncanny ability they seem to have. They work out very quickly. Do you need one date a week, one phone call a week? How little will you settle for, myself included? How little would we settle for and still keep them around? It's a wild ability. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to join the Survivor's Army and get access to my online chat group, there's also a link down in the description for you to do that. Have a great day, Survivor, and take care of yourself.